How's it going everyone? It is Pangino here and today I'm going to be providing you with the ultimate FPS increase guide for Apex Legends Season 8. This video is going to be helping you achieve the best FPS possible on your setup, helping you reduce your input latency and providing you with a plethora of optimizations to enhance your gaming experience and gain a competitive advantage. So whether or not you've watched any of my previous content for Apex or if this is the first time you're optimizing the game itself, make sure that you do follow along with as many steps in this video as possible to ensure that you are getting the best results. And speaking of results, if you guys do enjoy this video and are happy with your results, please leave a like on the video as it does help me out tremendously and let me know of any suggestions or content you'd like to see come to the channel in that comment section down below. And if you guys do enjoy this sort of content, please do consider pressing that subscription button alongside the bell notification to be notified instantly whenever new videos go live on the channel. We're going to start off by cleaning up our game installation and removing old unnecessary files from the game so we can generate brand new ones ready for season 8 which we can then go ahead and modify. We're first of all going to be going ahead and deleting our current configs for the game. For this you need to navigate down to the bottom left hand side, click on the windows button, type in percent users percent just like so and press enter. You'll then simply need to click on the folder which corresponds to the current user account on windows you're using. With inside of this simply scroll down to the saved games folder, double click, then navigate inside of respawn, apex, local. At this point if you do wish to make a current backup of your in-game binds, settings and other information I would recommend going ahead and simply copying all of these files and putting them on your desktop or somewhere safe if you wish to go back to these files. What we're then going to go ahead and do is simply select all three files, right click then select delete. Once the files have been deleted boot up into either origin or steam then simply go ahead and boot into the game. We can then go ahead and simply exit out as our brand new configs have now been generated. This now leads us on to the 2021 season 8 launch options for the game which have been highly revised. For these simply navigate down inside of the description down below where you'll be finding the launch options tab which you can then go ahead and copy and paste. Once you've got all of them highlighted select copy. What we can then go ahead and do is navigate into either Steam or Origin. For Steam users go ahead and right click on Apex, Properties, then navigate into the General tab, go to Launch Options and remove any launch options which may already be in here. Navigate over to the blank box then select Paste. Once the launch options have been pasted into the game it's worthwhile to take note that we've actually unlocked our FPS with inside of the game and uncapped it using this command found here. Now if you do wish to implement a manual FPS cap later on in the video, it is recommended to do so only via the NVIDIA control panel or the AMD Radeon settings panel, as implementing an FPS cap at the driver level rather than the game level will allow for much lower and more consistent frame times, allowing for a much smoother and snappier experience. Once that step has been completed, we can go back over to Apex with inside of Steam, right click, navigate down to Properties, this time going over to the Local Files tab on the left hand side and selecting Browse. With inside of it, we're going to simply scroll down to the R5 Apex.exe, right click, select Properties. With inside of this tab we're then going to go up to the compatibility option, navigate down to disable full screen optimizations, check high DPI settings, then go down to high DPI scaling override, check this option, press ok, apply and ok. That's going to apply some basic optimizations to the game, stopping it from using the default windows profile which can actually reduce FPS and increase input latency. Whilst we're still inside of the game installation directory this is a great opportunity to actually implement our brand new auto exec config which will launch every single time we boot into the game. This is very simple and easy to do but you will need to download the autoexec.cfg from the description down below. There is also going to be a paste bin for this file. In case you don't want to download a prepackaged file, that's completely fine. You can simply create your own CFG using all of the paste bin information down below as well. So either download the autoexec using the link in the description down below or create your own. Once you have the autoexec.cfg, we're going to go back inside of the game installation directory this time, navigate inside of the CFG folder. Once inside of it, we can then go over to our desktop and drag in the autoexec config just like so. And for safe measure, we're also going to be going inside of the client folder and also dragging it with inside of the CFG client folder just like so. We can then go ahead and exit out of the installation directory. One of the best and easiest things you can do for bettering performance with inside of Windows 10 currently is to ensure that you are running on the latest build or update of Windows 10. This is free and easy to access for everyone and at the time of recording this video this is one of the best Windows 10 builds for gaming in around about the last three years or so. To update Windows 10 it's very simple and easy to do. Navigate to the bottom left hand side, click on the Windows button. With inside of here we're then going to type in check for update updates just like so, then press enter. After a few short moments you'll then be given all of the available Windows updates which are currently awaiting to be installed on your machine. It's recommended to navigate down to the install now button for any updates which are pending as that will install the latest version of Windows 10 to your system. Now jumping on into optimizing Windows itself. First of all we're going to be navigating down to the bottom, clicking on Windows, typing in game space mode. Navigate up to game mode settings, ensure that the Windows game mode is switched to the on position. It's also recommended to go over to the Xbox game bar and ensure the Xbox game bar is switched to the off position. Once that's done, we can then go ahead and exit out. We can follow that up by navigating to the bottom once again, this time typing in GPU space settings. Going up to the graphics settings tab, you'll have the option for hardware accelerated GPU scheduling. If you don't see this option, don't panic, it just simply means that you're either running on an outdated version of Windows 
or your hardware isn't supported. If you do have this option, it is recommended to navigate over and turn this to the on position. Once that's set, we can then proceed to scroll down, navigating down to the graphics performance preference tab. With inside of here, we're going to go ahead and click on browse. We're going to navigate over to this PC. Once you've selected this, we're then going to go to search for this PC in the top right hand side, and we're going to search for R5 Apex exe then go ahead and press enter select this file then select add once it's been added go to the options menu ensure that high performance at the bottom has been selected then press save we can then go ahead and exit out for the next two optimizations we're actually going to be optimizing both the mouse and keyboard for responsiveness with inside of windows starting off with the keyboard navigate to the bottom left hand side once again this time type in keyboard click on the keyboard control panel option with inside of here we want to ensure that repeat delay and repeat rate are both set to fast and short go ahead to apply and press ok that optimization will simply help out when you're spamming multiple keys with inside of the game. Moving on to the mouse, we can go to the bottom left hand side once again, this time typing in mouse space settings. Click on the mouse settings tab, continue to scroll down, or on the right hand side of your screen, you'll see additional mouse options. We're going to be going over to pointer options. The two options in which we're about to change will help remove any acceleration from windows and give us much more accurate and predictable one-to-one -one mouse inputs with inside of windows. For the first option, we're going to make sure that enhanced pointer precision is unchecked. We're then going to take our slider found here all the way down to slow. This is going to be set to option 1. We need to go ahead and set this to option 6 and I like to use my arrow keys on my keyboard to do this. So we're on option 1 currently so we're going to be going over to 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Once it's set to 6 out of 11 with inside of here, go to apply then press ok. And we can top that off with some simple and easy system maintenance. For this, we're going to navigate down to the bottom left hand side once again, this time typing in percent, T E M P percent, and press enter. With inside of this folder, we're then going to go ahead and select every file and folder with inside of here, go all the way down to the bottom, right click, then select delete. For every prompt that comes up, click do this for all current items, then hit skip. Once that's completed, the only files and folders left with inside of here are the only ones Windows is actually using. Everything else you just deleted was an excess caching file, dump file, simply taking up space and soaking up resources. That now moves us on to the graphics card optimizations. Before we jump into these, just like with Windows, it's recommended to be running on the latest GPU driver for your graphics card to ensure that you are getting the best performance possible and have access to all of the brand new features such as Nvidia Reflex. Assuming you are now running on the latest GPU drivers, we can now go ahead and right click on our desktop and open up inside of the control panel for either Nvidia or or AMD Radeon. For those of you running on Nvidia graphics cards, we can start by going up to the top left hand side to adjust image settings with preview. Ensure that the use advanced 3D image settings middle option is checked, then press apply. Once that's been set, navigate over to manage 3D settings on the left hand side. With inside of here, we're then going to be changing a few options. To be on the safe side, it's recommended to navigate down to low latency mode and actually enable this. Now using Nvidia Reflex with inside of the game will actually take priority over this option, but this is just a good option to set anyway. We can then proceed to scroll down. We're going to be navigating down to the power management mode found here. With inside of here, set this to prefer maximum performance. Open GL rendering GPU. With inside of here, we're going to be setting this to your graphics card. Anisotropic sample optimization is going to be set to the on position. Texture filtering quality is going to be set to high performance. And all of the other settings can be left low. We can then navigate down to the bottom right hand side and select apply. For Nvidia users, if you are wishing to implement an FPS cap to the game, which is highly recommended, as you should not ever exceed above 190 frames frames with inside of Apex, otherwise you'll run into some serious performance issues. To set your in-game FPS cap, it's recommended to navigate over to the Program Settings tab with inside of the Manage 3D Settings, go to the drop down menu and select Apex Legends. If you don't see this with inside of here, go to the Add section and select Apex with inside of there. Once you've navigated with inside of here, we're then going to navigate down to Max Frame Rate. Go to the drop down menu, select this to the On position, and we want to implement our custom FPS cap with inside of here. I would recommend setting a maximum frame cap of 190. Go ahead and select OK, select Apply, and we're good to go. Moving on to to those of you that are using a Radeon graphics card. Right click on your desktop, open up inside of the AMD Radeon software panel. Once inside of here, navigate up to the gaming tab, then click on global graphics. For the best settings, regardless of the spec of the graphics card you are using, you should use all of the settings shown on the side of the screen here. Copy down all of them. Once they're done, we're then good to continue on. Moving on to capping your FPS for an AMD Radeon card, simply navigate inside of the AMD Radeon control panel once again, this time navigating up to the gaming tab. With inside of here, go ahead and select Apex Legends. Once inside of here, navigate down to Radeon. Radeon Chill. Enable Radeon Chill and set your minimum and maximum FPS to your FPS cap. So if you're looking to cap your FPS at 100 FPS, you'll set both the minimum and the maximum to 100 frames per second. You want to make sure that both the minimum and maximum FPS values are set to the same value, as if these are different, Radeon Chill will then kick in and we do not wish to use this software. We only want to implement an FPS cap. Moving on to those of you that are using a Radeon graphics card. Right click on your desktop, open up inside of the AMD Radeon software panel. Once inside of here, navigate up to the gaming tab, then click on global graphics. For the best settings, regardless
regardless of the spec of the graphics card you are using, you should use all of the settings shown on the side of the screen here, copy down all of them, once they are done, we're then good to continue on. Now moving on to optimising for our in-game launchers and other programs such as Discord we may have running on our PC. Starting off with any of you that are using Steam. If you are using Steam, it's recommended to navigate inside of Steam, go to your friends and chat list on the bottom right hand side. Once this tab opens up, navigate to the top right hand side to the settings cog. With inside of it, it's then recommended to navigate down to the enable animated avatars section and ensure this is turned to the off position. It's also recommended not to be using the Steam in-game overlay whilst playing Apex as it's not necessary for inviting people or playing the game. To turn off the Steam in-game overlay, right click on Apex, go down to properties, navigate up to the enable Steam overlay in-game option, uncheck this, we can then go ahead and exit out. For any of you that are using Discord whilst playing the game, even if it's just open in the background or if you're talking to people whilst playing, navigate to the bottom left hand side to your user settings cog. To start off we're going to proceed to scroll all the way down to the bottom left hand side to the gaming settings, navigate over to overlay and ensure that enable in-game overlay is unselected. Once that's been applied we can then navigate over to the appearance tab on the left hand side, continue to scroll all the way down to the bottom, but inside of here you'll then see hardware acceleration. For those of you running on ultra low end systems to medium end systems, it's recommended to have hardware acceleration on Discord turned to the on position. And for those of you running on medium end to ultra high end PCs, it's recommended to have hardware acceleration turned to the off position. Once you turn this off, go ahead and click OK, Discord will then be restarted and you'll be good to go. This is where I'm going to be recommending programs and applications which can help boost your FPS in pretty much every single game you play and better manage the resources available on your PC. These are incredibly safe, simple and easy to use, you will not get banned from using any of these programs and they are recommended for every single game in which you play. For the next program I recommend comes in the form of the Intelligent Standby List Cleaner or ISLC program which can be found in the description down below. This is an incredibly easy to use but effective optimization program which will help reduce the input latency between your operating system. This will also help increase FPS and is very fast and easy to set up. Navigate to the download section in the description down below, click on the ISLC or Intelligent Standby List Cleaner link, but inside of here proceed to scroll all the way down to the bottom to the official download here page. Once that's been selected, go ahead and simply double click on the file and open it up. Now we go over to the right hand side to the three dots and I recommend extracting this to your desktop. Press OK, then press Extract. Double click on the folder, navigate to the Intelligent Standby List Cleaner program and double click. For the first box on the left hand side, you want to set this to 1024. The second box needs to be set to half of your available system memory. This can be found in the top left hand side of the program. For me that's 32,000, so half of that's going to be 16,000. We can then navigate over to the right hand side to wanted time resolution, set this to a value of 0 0.50, then use the delete key on your keyboard to remove any other values. Check the option for enable custom time resolution, navigate down to ISLC polling rate, set this to 1000 for low to medium end systems and from medium end to high end systems go to 500. Once that's all been set up we can then go ahead and click on start then purge standby list. It is recommended to run this program just like I showed you there by clicking on start and purge standby list every single time you go to boot one of your favourite games. Once the program is set up like this then go ahead and minimise out and keep the program running in the background. It is vital to make sure that you are running on the correct windows power plan to ensure that you are getting the most out of the resources available to you. For this simply navigate to the bottom left hand side, type in power space plan. With inside of here navigate up to the edit power plan options menu. Navigate to the navigation bar at the top, select power options, then go ahead and select show additional plans. You'll then be able to see every single power plan available in your PC. Now over time my recommendation for which power plan to use has changed depending on what CPUs have been available to the market and the state of Windows. Both AMD Ryzen users and Intel users, regardless of the spec or model of your CPU, you should be going with the default Windows high performance power plan which should easily be selected with inside of power plans. Simply navigate down to the power plan, select the option next to it. Once it's been selected, go ahead and exit out. Now before we can go in and actually optimize our in-game configs in which we've just generated, we first of all need to boot into the game to go through our in-game settings to set a baseline of how we want the game to be set up. Once you've booted into the main menu of the game, it's recommended to navigate down to the bottom left to your trios menu and select this to the firing range. Once you've loaded into the firing range, we're first of all going to be going ahead and selecting escape. Navigate inside of the settings menu and starting off with our gameplay tab. With inside of here, it's recommended to ensure that all of your custom settings are still set or inputting all of the custom settings you now currently want. Once you've set those settings, go ahead and scroll down. We're going to be turning off usage sharing down here and also turning on the performance display. This will help us be able to see the in-game ping and FPS we're receiving. Once those have been set, we can then navigate over to keyboard and mouse. This is where you'll have to input any key bindings you have or mouse sensitivity information. Then navigating over to the video tab. Display mode should always be kept to full screen regardless of the settings which you're using. This provides the best FPS and the lowest level of input latency. Resolution is recommended to set this to your native resolution.
resolution, so scroll along until you find whichever resolution is set to native. If you don't see native, go to the highest resolution available for you. Field of view is personal preference, but do bear in mind the higher the field of view you're using, the worse your FPS will be. Sprint view shake should be set to minimum. VSync should also be set to disabled. This now brings us on to one of the brand new options for season eight, which is Nvidia Reflex. If you do have Nvidia Reflex available to you for your graphics card, and you can change this option. For those of you running on a GTX based GPU, it's recommended to go with enabled plus boost. For those of you running on an RTX based GPU, it's recommended just to go with enabled. This then brings us down to the adaptive resolution FPS target. For those of you running on relatively low to medium end systems and you're struggling to get over 100 FPS, I would definitely go ahead and set this option up. For this, you simply need to set this number to your desired level of minimum FPS. So if you never want to dip below 60 FPS with inside of the game, you'll simply set this to 60. Anytime the game naturally gets stressed enough to the point where it's going to drop below 60 FPS, your game will dynamically lower the resolution of your game, resulting in a slightly worse looking game, helping you not dip below this performance number. And you can set this more aggressively depending on the system specs or the target you wish to go with. If you rarely drop below 100 FPS though, I'd recommend not using this option. Anti-aliasing, I'd recommend going ahead and selecting none for the best performance possible. Texture streaming budgets should be set to either very low, which is 2GB, or should be set to medium for high-end PCs. Texture filtering should be set to bilinear, ambient occlusion quality, disabled, sun shadow coverage, low, sun shadow detail low, bot shadow detail disabled, volumetric lighting disabled, dynamic spot shadows disabled, model detail, I'd recommend keeping on medium for decent gaming PCs and for low-end machines, go with low. Effects detail low, impact markers disabled, and ragdolls also set to low. Once our settings have been set up, click apply, then press back. Have a look around the game, see how the game performs, and decide whether or not you're completely happy with your in-game settings. We're going to be further tweaking them with inside of our configs, so ensure that you are happy with the baseline settings you've currently got set. Once you've closed out the game, we can then go ahead and actually optimize our in-game configs. For this, we're going to be navigating down to the bottom left once again, clicking on the Windows button, typing in percentage, users, percentage, once again, and pressing enter. Go back inside of that user folder we went into earlier, navigate down to saved games, Respawn, Apex, Local. With inside of it, open up the video config.txt file. Starting off with Gib Allow. Ensure this is set to zero. Fullback Base is going to be set to one. Fullback Multiplier is going to be set to one. Ragdoll Max Count, zero. Ragdoll Self Collision, one. Matte Force Aniso is going to be set to zero. Matte Pick Mip is going to be set to a value of four. Particle CPU Levels is going to be set to zero. Create Model Decals, zero. R Decals, zero. R LOD Switch Scale is going to be set Set to 0 0.5. For super low end systems, set this to 0 0.4. Shadow enable is going to be set to 0. Shadow depth, dimin min is going to be set to 0. Depth, up res factor, 0. Shadow max dynamic, 0. SSAO enabled, 0. DVS enable. This is the dynamic render resolution option we were talking about earlier. This is where we can dial in some custom settings to set that adaptive resolution target to higher than 100 FPS if we wish to do so. This will help keep that resolution number closer to the minimum resolution you can set with inside of here. So using the numbers and settings on the right hand side of the screen now, I'd recommend setting this to the minimum FPS you want to have your game set to. So if you're targeting your game towards having a 120 FPS minimum all of the time, you'll set that option. For me, I'm going to be setting my game up so it never drops below 144 FPS. So I'll be using the numbers found on the right hand side of the screen now. My minimum is going to be set to 5,800. My maximum is going to be set to 6,800. We then also need to make sure that DVS enable is also set to one if we wish to use this option. If you don't, go ahead and just simply set DVS to zero. Setting dot full screen should be set to one. Volumetric lighting should be set to zero. Matte VSync mode should be set to zero. Matte back buffer count should be set to one. Matte anti-aliasing mode, zero. CSM enabled should be set to zero. CSM coverage, zero. CSM cascade res is going to be set to 100. 28. Lots but not least, this then brings us down to Fade Distance Scale. I'd recommend setting this to either 0.9 for decent end gaming PCs, and for those of you on super low end systems, set this to 0.7. I'm going to be going with 0.9, and ensure that DVS Super Sample Enabled is set to 0. Once that's all done, we can then navigate up to the top left hand side, and then select Save. We now actually have to lock the file, or set the file to read only, so these options cannot be changed by the in-game settings whenever you press apply. Right click on the video config.txt, then navigate down to Properties. Navigate down to Attributes and select Read Only found here. We can then go ahead and select Apply and OK. Now that we have set the game to read only, if you do go ahead and actually change any video options with inside of the game, they will automatically be reset every single time, as we've essentially locked the in-game settings file, so nothing will be able to change the settings with inside of there. If at any point you do wish to make some changes if you're not happy with how your game looks, or you want to experiment around with some other settings, you must come back to this file, right click, navigate down to Properties and unselect 
select read only, then press apply, then press OK. You'll then be able to make any changes you wish to do so, both by going into the file manually or navigating inside of the in-game settings options and changing them through there. But assuming that I'm 100% happy with this config, I'm now going to lock it. You can then go ahead and exit out and it's recommended to quickly boot into the game, go back inside of the in-game training area and have a look how your game is set up and how the visuals are. All there is left to do now is to simply tab back with inside of Apex and enjoy our highly optimized Season 8 experience. And there you guys have it. That is the ultimate FPS increase guide for Apex Legends Season 8 for 2021. If you guys have enjoyed this video and are happy with your results, please do remember to leave a like on the video as it does help me out tremendously. And again, if you do enjoy this sort of content, please do consider pressing that subscription button alongside the bell notification to be notified instantly whenever new content goes live on the channel. Thank you ever so much for taking the time to watch this video. I've been Pangino and I'll see you in the next one.